Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is a ramble. Big red letters, it's me, Alex. And it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday. Welcome to our fine little show. It goes from now until midnight and uh, um, uh, we'll uh, try and do our best to entertain you or, or some reasonable facsimile thereof. Uh, but uh, I every um, uh, what is it Tuesday, Tuesday, we uh, we we invite this guy to come on um, because he's kind of extricated himself from our from our normal show. But here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, it's four twenty, but I don't have any dope. I got a lighter. Oh, it is four twenty, isn't it? I forgot. I should have celebrated today. Yeah. Uh, maybe well, I'll, I'll have a joint to put me to sleep tonight. That's what I'll do. I, you you know? know, I noticed Dan Meyer's listening. I saw him right in. So he's got dope, you know. Yeah, he's got lots of dope. You know what I haven't done? Let me see. Let me put your name here so everybody knows who you are. Okay. Oh, well, then I better stop talking about dope. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. See? There's Phil Meyer. Yay. <laughs> nah, I had trouble starting off tonight. Uh, the uh, thing that plays my music was busted so i had to reboot it and then uh let's see what else happened uh ah, nothing much else happened oh uh, well uh, yeah. I, I do you know i do crosswords every day i'm whenever i'm on the toilet i do a crossword uh do you okay. do that duco stuff no or? i do the no i do the new york times crossword mm -hmm. and i've been doing it for years and i subscribe to it every year and today at uh, this evening it suddenly went to a you 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 can't you have to subscribe to this and then when i try to subscribe to it it says you're already subscribed all right so no crossword i think you. there's something wrong at the new york times tonight I, there's something wrong at the new york times every night yeah but, well that, uh, yeah, that's your opinion i think they're a fine newspaper they're yeah. the they're the they're the they're the thing of record the uh you know newspaper of record yeah i have some froth in my I shake, shook my, my, what do you call it up? My, uh, I use this cream that's called, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it, it's, it's got low carb in it, all yeah. right? It's low carb cream, and it's really tasty, and I don't usually use cream in my coffee, but uh, I, I started using it today and uh, a couple of weeks ago and really decided I like it a lot. Hey, people, well, don't try to... To join in on our Zoom right now because it just puts a sign up on the screen and it's a pain in the ass. Wait, wait till, till I, wait till I'm through with him and then you can call. Okay. I, uh, I I've been drinking my coffee black yeah. uh, because I want to prove I'm not systematically racist. Yeah. But uh, you know, but I I, I swore off the cream. Mm. Uh, you know, I, it's dairy and cream and all of yeah. those things or, uh, you know, just not good for losing weight. You know, yeah. your friend... Uh, well, yeah, but, but the cream, see, if you use this cream, it, yeah. and I'm trying to remember what the name of it is now. It has a name. They, in fact, they, they, they presented themselves on Shark Tank and didn't get any money. And now they're a really big company. And what it is, is it, it, it uh, uses no sugar and things like that. And it's a cream for your coffee that has no carbs. Hmm. Zero carbs. So that's yeah. you could drink, you could do that, you know. And it tastes like cream, huh? And it tastes like cream. Oh yeah, it, it's really good. But right here, it looks like I got a swamp in there. Yeah. Hmm. So, so you have to mix it, and it gets frothy. No, I shook it tonight oh. before I put it in, and, and it, it got this little froth on it. I think I, I bought a new uh, carton of it today. I think I need a new carton. I think this one's getting yeah. a little, little gamey. Uh, yeah, what, what, isn't there some other stuff, non-dairy creamer? Uh, yeah, but called? this is a non-dairy creamer, but it's it's really good. It's really yeah. good. I'll get, I'll send you the name of it when I get Yeah, please do. Uh, you'll get me back on cream. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I know. It, 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 it's, it's a fine cream. In other words, you won't have any problem 
from a yeah. from a diabetic standpoint at all. Well, I'm starting to enjoy the taste of black coffee. Mm -hmm. I actually buy a, um, I have a subscription mm -hmm. to a, a company called Black Rifle Coffee. They support veterans. Mm -hmm. It's veteran owned. And so every three weeks I get three uh, pounds of coffee or three packages. I don't know if they're pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the one I get is called Murder Out. And it's their strongest coffee. <laughs> no, they have all these coffees that they name these horrible things. Like the one you turned me on to originally was Death Wish. Yeah, yeah. But That's finally, what I'm drinking now, uh, I'm drinking two kinds of a brand called Wake Me the Hell Up. Yeah. And it's uh, it's got one flavor that I love called Jamaican Me Crazy. Yeah. Which it, I also get in a Wolfgang Puck version, which I'm drinking right now because it, the other one's really strong and this one's not as strong. Yeah. And then I, the other one is cannoli. And it's cannoli. just really good tasting coffee. I really love it, you know. But they have all these things like murder and uh, uh, do you want to die tonight uh, coffee and, you know, really, you know. Well, the murder out doesn't have K-cups. Murder so. out. So I, I might have to I might have to switch to one of their medium roasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't know why they don't have K cups. Uh, so I I make uh, I make mm -hmm. a pot every morning. Yeah, I well, I'm, you know, I, I, I get I get my K cups coming and uh. yeah, mm. it's sludgy. It's just really sludgy. That's yeah. not good. I feel like I'm drinking from a swamp. Look at that! Look at that, folks! Can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah, that, that looks like the stuff that comes uh, when I when you walk into my store. There's a little. Well, it looks stand. like I jerked off in my coffee. Is what it looks like. Well, with the stand, you get some uh, uh, cleaner for your hands, some disinfectant. Yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so um, um, uh, you know, we had big news today. Yeah. Uh, Derek Chauvin is not going to smoke pot tonight, but you know maybe he'll have some of that. Uh, what, what is that? That uh, liquor that they make in the prison? Uh, they use socks and uh, whatever homebrew. Homebrew, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, it, what, what did you What did you think of the whole thing? You... Well, uh, I was glad that uh, justice prevailed. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt when I originally saw the tape that there was. Uh, a, a show of force that was beyond reasonable, mm -hmm. and uh, and, you, and you were a guy who was a cop, so you you know you're you're looking yeah. at it from that perspective, right? Yeah, I wouldn't do that to somebody, especially if they were in cuffs. Yeah. Uh, and I had three other guys there. Uh, I ought to be able to control them. Yeah, and uh, I don't know why he did what he did. I don't think it was racism. Uh, you know. I, well, I mean, I, let me put it this way: it, it's it, it's not conscious racism, but it is a kind of attitude which existed for quite a while within some police departments. Well, yeah, yeah about uh, black uh, blacks years, and you know, many years ago. But uh, you know, a lot of police departments are all they're they're they have black chiefs. They they have. It's a funny though. They I, I know they have black officers in Minneapolis, but the only ones that showed up were white. Oh, for this particular makes, thing, you'd think there'd be at least one black cop involved or something, you know. Uh, there was some uh, Asian cops. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, just the luck of the draw. The radio sends you out to a uh, to a call, and you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. And the the initial the body cams that I saw of mm -hmm. all the officers looked to be a a reasonable uh, encounter until. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, uh, Floyd uh, continued to resist, but that's what people do. They resist. And you're supposed to be able to mm -hmm. deal with that resistance. Uh, well, so, there are a lot of other factors involved here, none the least of which is probably they suspect that, that, uh, that George Floyd was, in fact, at the time, high on something. I mean, that he had, he, had, he had been sleeping in the car and so on and, and so forth. That still, that doesn't give a reason for them to do what they did. He was, uh, he was being, not allowing himself to be restrained. Um, there are ways, I suppose, of handling that. Or if he was going to do the knee to the neck, you do it for the, uh, a short amount of time until you've got him restrained, and then you, you let go. 
you know, you, you, and when, especially when he's saying, I can't breathe, I mean, how many times have you heard that story? Uh, like with the Eric Garner case here in New York, where the term I can't breathe became very well known. You know? I was, I was, um, I was on a stop where I was by myself. Uh, on yeah. patrol, yeah, and uh, the radio said that a guy had pulled a knife on a 12-year-old. So I saw the guy on the sidewalk. He fit the description. I pulled over. I got out. I called in the thing that I, you know, was was out on, uh, yeah. you know, on the suspect, mm -hmm. and I was talking to him. Now he was frothing at the mouth. He had like this white beaded sweat that was coming out of him, mm -hmm. and he was high on PCP. Yeah. So uh, I had a conversation. I said, you got a, you got the knife? And he says, yeah. I said, can I have it? He says, yeah. So he gives, he gives, he hands it over to me. I had a very reasonable conversation with this guy. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I need you to turn around and uh, put your hands behind your back. Well, when he started to do that, he had superhuman strength. It was unbelievable. I got one cuff on and I couldn't get the other cuff on. Well, luckily at that point uh, uh a number of other officers showed up to back me up mm -hmm. and of course a crowd was gathering there was probably about 30 people out there mm -hmm. and we tried to uh get the guy in cuffs and he there was six of us on this guy and we couldn't pin him down finally we get him onto the hood of the sergeant's car mm -hmm. and uh he and we and we get him cuffed uh, I had his leg. I was pushing his leg up. Uh, and so anyway, we get him in the back of the sergeant's car, and he kicks the door so hard he bent the frame of the window and, and everything, and he's starting to just destroy the inside of the guy's car. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, they get him out, and they're going to hog tie him, which is where you have cuffs, and then you put uh, restraints around his legs, and then you tie them together mm -hmm. so we could pull him into the car without him destroying it. And so he says to me, uh, I, I, uh, he says, uh, 604 can cuff me. That was my badge number. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. <laughs> I said, turn around. And I cuffed him. Yeah. Uh, it, but these, when some of these drugs that they take, they just have this super, super human strength. And six of us, we couldn't... Uh, yeah, we couldn't I can, I, yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, I don't think, you know, I mean, from everything that was said, and even in the courtroom, uh, George Floyd was no angel. No. You know, they made him out to, they made him to be an angel now, but, but he was, he was, you know, he was, he had problems, and yeah. he had drug problems. And... Uh, uh, you know, um, I, so far as whether he was trying to pass a, a counterfeit bill or not, hey, how many of us? Uh, one time I went in somewhere and they looked at a bill I had and they said, this is counterfeit. And I said, oh, OK, well, give it to me. And they said, no, we can't give it back to you. Right. Uh, yeah. And I was kind of mad because I went, gee, I've finally got a fraudulent bill. I could show this to everybody. I could show, them, hey, this is that. counterfeit, you know. Title 18 thing. But, you know, yeah. uh, uh, the guy, uh, just to finish up that little conversation, yeah. I said, what did you do? And he says, I'm smoking Sherm. Now, you smoked Sherman cigarettes. Cigarette. Yeah. And what they would do is they would take the Sherman cigarettes. Really? With a PCP. And that's how they'd get high. That's very expensive. Really? <laughs> those cigarettes were like you know back in the day they yeah. were like three bucks a pack yeah you know i smoked them almost exclusively but they were three bucks a pack now everybody's laughing at me because just regular cigarettes are like 27 a pack or something like that or yeah they're they're very expensive yeah, yeah. uh but uh you know uh i uh when the verdict came in and then they they listed the actual things you know the actual yeah, the three counts the three counts i had to agree with them with the jury you know i thought the first one was going to be for like first degree murder and it wasn't it was like it was something second degree murder third degree murder and one other thing and second and uh, third uh, third degree third manslaughter murder. manslaughter was the last what, what is third degree murder I, I no, there's a third degree murder, but it was no. the manslaughter it was like third degree manslaughter or something like that i, I would have figured that that's what he would have gotten. I, I didn't figure it for second degree. Do you think that the jury felt pressure because of things like Maxine Waters going there? And well, she, they out? probably didn't hear her. They were I, they were already, I think, sequestered by the time that she made her statement. They okay. weren't sequestered over the weekend. 
Um, uh, well, she didn't. Did she say it over the weekend? I don't. I don't know I, when she said what she said. So. Well, what did she supposedly say now again? Uh, she was in. Uh, she was in Brooklyn okay. Center. And yeah, it was something about uh, get out there and uh, it wasn't make noise, but it was. Uh, she was it, inciting. It, well, you she know, I got to tell you something. There's something very interesting today Biden. that happened. Yeah. And I got to take Biden to task for this. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, Biden, Biden got, uh, he, he, he gave a little impromptu press conference in the, in the Oval Office, mm -hmm. and he said, well, you know, he said, now that the jury is sequestered and they can't hear me, uh, I think this guy is guilty as hell, right, right, or something to that effect. Well, and, I, and I went, you know, it's not a good time to do that. You should really wait until the trial is over with for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't want to try the case, okay? You don't want to try it in absentia, you know? And you also, uh, you're not going to influence the jury, but what you're going to do by saying that is that if, let's say he was not found guilty of those three charges, or maybe just one charge, or he, it was enough that people wanted to riot, yeah. what he said today could have almost been like Trump kind of a, a, a message to march. Well, you, you, know, you know, and and I I didn't uh, I I was not a, I I did not approve of that. Well, that's what Maxine uh, Water was is it Waters or Well, she she also was was saying, you know, and if it comes out bad, we should go out there and you know, make trouble. It's the place up. Uh, well, you know, I I, I, I think I think I think number 1 she should Go back to California, where yeah. it's it's her home roost for doing this sort of thing. I think there were a lot of people out there. Uh, you know, it's interesting to note, and and Marjorie keeps bringing this up to me, that you know we feel sorry for the for the for the uh, Floyd family, but how sorry does the Floyd family feel when they got a twenty-seven million dollar settlement with the city of Minneapolis? I mean, they are set for life, okay? I wonder how much of that they're going to give to, uh, you know, food banks and, and things like that. I don't. They, nobody said anything about giving it to food banks. And now, you know, also Black Lives Matter, the woman that is the CEO, president of Black Lives yeah. Matter, bought four houses, uh, one of them for $1.4 million in Los Angeles, uh, where is all this money coming from? Well, all I'm you know, saying, all I'm saying is, I mean, we could say that about a lot of people. We'd say that, but about some politicians, we know. Uh, but um, uh, I think uh, that you know that this was a proper verdict, and I think that George Floyd is what I call an unintentioned uh, hero. He would never. He would ne really. He became a hero because he became a symbol of something. He became an example of something, and by his very death, he created a really definite dialogue in this country about this thing. So he's kind of what I call, a, a, you know, I, a, I call people in history uh, the people who are like uh, reluctant heroes. You know, they didn't, they didn't say they wouldn't on their own have been heroes, but because of what happened to them and how they they did it, they became heroes. Well, yeah. That you know, I, I, I feel very bad for uh, you know anyone that is killed unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Although you know, this, uh, I don't, I don't feel that there's systemic racism in this country. I don't. I think I do. I do. Oh country, no, I don't think. I, there I think are you're racist. I think you're wrong. I, I, I don't think people wake up in the morning and say, "I'm going to hate." You know, there may be a few, but it's no the systemic racism. It doesn't have to be an overt racism. I mean, I've often said that I am a racist because I'm white, and I don't fully understand what it's like to live as a minority. Okay, and I had a certain uh, free pass of white privilege uh, going around where other friends of mine didn't. Okay, did, you, uh, did your Judaism hold you back? No, uh, nationally never. at all. Never. All right, because it's, it held a number of people back. It didn't hold me back in show business because there are a lot of Jews in show business, you yeah. know. But um, um, I will have to say that, you know, I, I tell the story about how I had a good, my best friend in the whole world. Uh, uh, the was shoemaker's kid? Was black, no, was black. Yeah. 
Sausalito. Sausalito. The shoemaker's kid, yeah. And, uh, you know, I came back from the military, and I, in the intervening time, there had been the Watts riots, there had been a lot of different things that had happened, and I immediately sought him out because I wanted to see him. He's my best, best friend. And we met at a bar, and he said, uh, listen, uh, i got to tell you something. I said, what? And it was, hi, how are you? Oh, gee, it's great to see you. It's great to see you, too. And then he said, i got to tell you something. He says, I can't see you anymore. And I said, why? And he said, well, things have changed in the last couple of years. And now it's, you know, it's blacks against whites. He said, and I can't, you know, I just, I, 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 I think the world of you and you're my best friend, but I just can't see you anymore. Because I, I have another agenda in my life. And a short time after that, he drowned in the bay. Isn't uh, that a racist statement, though? Uh, not at the time. If you, if you look back at the times, the time was a time of change where certain blacks were saying, listen, I've got to stand up against what's being done to blacks in this country. And you can't do it having a white friend. You know, well, it, it just compromises your, your fervor. I, I, under, I understood it. And what I hated was not him for that, but for the racism that made it happen. Well, okay. uh, I, I would have looked beyond it. It's just that it, that, that scene sort of reminds me of, uh, of a scene that was in the Forrest Gump movie, you know, where mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Black Panther party was, was having a party and uh, Forrest yeah. Gump says, I'm sorry that I... I uh, messed up your your black pan your your party your, your pot party your black panther party. Yeah. yeah, but whatever. Anyway, uh, all I'm saying is is that uh, you know there is systemic racism in this country, uh, and I'm sure you and I have both been a part of it because we are just we we never walked in other people's those people's shoes, and but so therefore fine. we don't know we don't know what it's like day to day to live with. Uh, you know, you and I are Jewish, but we could kind of not pass for Jewish, okay? Well, well, damn. you know, that's why I uh, like traveling, and that's why I like scuba diving. The, the idea is when you travel, you're not the center of the universe. And when you're scuba diving, mm -hmm. you're visiting a place where you're certainly not the center of the no, universe. that's right. You need a tank to breathe. So, uh, and sometimes the shark is the center of the universe. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but but that, all I'm saying, all I'm saying to you is that because we're white, there's an element of racism in us, which is our inability to understand totally what it's like to walk in I don't black need to skin. Understand it. I don't need to. Understand I can it. empathize with it, but I still don't know what it's like. But it doesn't you know? matter. I don't need to understand it. I don't need to empathize with it. I mean, I just, the closest the closest I came to is when I had hair down to here and cabs wouldn't stop for me. You yeah. know, well, uh, that's because they knew you were Jewish. But, uh, you know, I don't have to uh, kowtow to uh, some mystical thing where I, it's systemic racism. I, I'm me. Uh, other people are them. If they're good to me and I'm good to them. Yeah, but here's what you should do is you should admit that there is systemic racism. And in that small way, wait a minute, in that small way, you're helping to eliminate it. Well, I eliminate it just by being kind to yeah. other people. And, uh, and, you know, I am who I am. This is the way I was born. Yeah. And uh, I should not be forced uh, to, uh, to, to it, it's the same. So with, you don't uh, think what happened in Minneapolis wasn't a racist incident? I don't think it was. I think that Chauvin was a bad guy and it was more about ego than it was about racism. How this come? How come we don't ever hear about a white guy being treated this way? Oh yes, yes. Uh, I, I I beg to differ. Really? I cannot cite the specific things, but uh, I have seen a number of uh, videos of white guys uh, being put in this exact same position with the knee. Uh, hmm. I just you know nobody thinks about it and says, oh well, uh, you know here it is because I'm not trying to answer. Uh, yeah. the situation. I, I, you know, I, I don't yeah. like the situation. Well, I, 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 for years, have, been, have said that I, I felt that, you know, even I would, be, I would say to people, you know, I'm a racist, and I'm a racist by virtue of the fact that I'm white, and I can't be anything else 
because I don't live that other life. And, and I, I can sympathize with it, I can empathize with it, but I can't be it. I can't live but it. See, there is, there is no it. People are people. Just because they, one guy has more melatonin in his skin. But, uh, Phil, that isn't the case, though. I mean, you have to admit that, that blacks are disproportionately... Uh, pr 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 well, actually, what bothers me is that the black movement in this country, the Black Lives Matter, has put an emphasis on black. But the same thing happens to Hispanic people in this country. It happens to Asians in this country. It happens to a lot of people of, race, of races. And uh, largely the problem isn't even that they're black, but they're poor and black, okay? So it's not only a racist problem, but it, it, it's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a, a pecking order problem. Well, I think you know? that it's racist for me to feel like I have to ex you know, uh, recognize the, the racism. Uh, I, you know, if you... It makes me be then part of the equation mm -hmm. if I have to say I'm white, so therefore I'm systematic, uh, systematically racist. Mm -hmm. it, I I am me, and mm -hmm. and and well, you know, they yeah. are people. I'm just saying that it it, it would it, it, you could help the problem by at least saying that there is a problem. Uh, but I don't believe yeah. that yeah. that I don't believe because I'm white that that's the problem. There is a problem. There is a problem with... Listen, I, I know you, Phil. I know that you're not racist at all. I know right. that I've never talked to you. Anytime I've talked to you, I've never heard anything even remotely racist in a conversation that we've had. So I know you're not racist. And I know pretty much that I'm not racist. Okay? Yeah. Um, but uh, I will say that if I was walking down the street in Harlem at midnight and there were five black guys walking in back of me, I might walk a little faster. But if there were five white guys, I might not walk as fast. Okay. This, and that's I, racism. What? This this poster says, uh, you wouldn't go into this uh, uh, alley for a million bucks. A cop does it for a lot less. A reserve does it for free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, when you say, you know, walking down yeah. that dark alley, uh, that's... Yeah. that's that's the deal now, but I, I feel that if I uh, f say, uh, "Oh, I I am part of the systematic racism," mm -hmm. then really I'm being racism, racist, and divisive by uh, by saying that I have to give somebody else permission. I don't have to give anybody permission. They have their own permission. Nobody has to give me. Yeah. We, you know, well, anyway, uh, that, be that as it may, I've got to go and talk to these okay. other people. The but. only other good thing is I bought 64 megs of memory for the uh, garbage can. For 60, well, I have 64 megs in mine. I know you do. I had 16. Wait a minute. I the garbage can? That, that isn't garbage. I, I don't know what. They have I, the Mac Pro. The Mac, the Mac Pro. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, so you need okay. So you need both all of those in there. I don't yeah. know. I've never looked to see where they're seated and stuff, but I got oh, it yeah. at sixty-four. Well, you take off the cover and they and they're sitting right there. Yeah. But uh, so I'm I'm catching up a little bit. It's only six core, but yeah. I'm going for the sixty-four. And you know what happened to this? The price? Yeah. One ninety-nine. Really? Uh, when when I first got it, they it was seven hundred bucks. No, this is uh, this is twelve core. What I got here? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. This thing's a powerhouse, a powerhouse, I tell you. Anyway, yeah. hey, listen, I got to go because I got people who want to talk. And, you know, All right. And oh, like and uh, one other thing. Alan gave me a shirt. Oh, really? Uh, Nobody uh, needs uh, an uh, AR-15. Nobody, Nobody needs a, a, a whiny little bitch either. Yet here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there he goes. That's our All friend, right. uh, Phil it's Meyer. Four twenty. <laughs> oh, yes, four twenty. Smoke your joint. Bye. Bye. See you later. Okay, there we go. Um, why did that, why did that change so fast? Gee, I, things. I'm, oh, it's supposed to be. It's, it just went boom. So I don't know. I give up. I'm not going to even try and figure this out any longer. Well, it's time now to go uh, talk to our good friends uh, over at the uh, Zoom panel. So let me admit the two that are there. Okay. Let me admit the two that are there and see if anybody else wants to join us. Uh, uh, 
Here's uh, Alan, and Trucker Steve is with us as well. Uh, let me see here. There he is. Um, okay, Steve, there you are. Okay, good. All righty. How you doing, Alan? I'm good. How's my volume? Your, your volume's uh, fine, I think. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's not blasting away. Good. Uh, where are you right now, uh, Trucker Steve? Uh, Ripon, California. Where? Ripon, California. Ripon? Yeah, it's right on the 99. Really? Do you know Ripon, close, Alan? Close, yeah. Close to Modesto. Yeah, oh, close, oh, close to near, Modesto. Near, near Modesto. Every now and then somebody comes up with a town or something in California like Ripon, and I go, where? Like, I lived in Modesto, and now if, you, if I think about it, I remember Ripon. It was nearby, as it were. At start on the 99. Yeah. Yeah, how's uh, how's traffic? Is it good? Is it easy? Is it easier now that COVID's out there and people aren't driving as much? Uh, I was kind of stupid today. A really? lot of stupid four wheelers. A lot of stupid four wheelers. Oh, okay. Um, and hello to Jeff. How was your weekend, Jeff? Your audio. You just you, dialed nine one one today. You don't have any audio there, a, Jeff. You got to hit. I just dialed nine one one because there's a what there was a. Suspicious yeah. guy walking through the Flying J parking lot here. Oh, really? Well, how is he? Su- at, how was he? Looking su- inside of trucks. How is he suspicious? Uh, messy, homeless, looked like he's mentally ill. Oh, okay. He's looking at trucks. Oh, okay. He wouldn't have, like he's scoping he, them out. Yeah, he wouldn't have done that in Texas, though. <laughs> they, have, they have a lot of guns in Texas. And speaking of, of Texas, Charlie's with us tonight. Dr. Doom, tell us the count yeah. and the amount here. How are we doing? Oh, it's only 750 dead Americans today. Wow, it's slowing down. It's slowing down. Yeah, I, I think the combination of the uh, of the vaccine uh, and the the uh, the fact that we know better how to handle this particular disease is helping. So over half of the Americans have had at least one vaccine. I wonder, are they giving anybody know? Are they giving the vaccine to people in the hospital who might have come down with COVID? as a way of minimizing the effects of it? I no. don't know. Uh, no? As far as I know, I think they are. They actually, or at least people that have had it have gotten over it have gotten vaccines. Oh, yeah, yeah that, yeah. With that we know. Not while, they're, not while they're in the hospital, though, with COVID. They tell you to wait 14 days after COVID. Oh, you're right. Well, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Well, screw that then. Yeah. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hey. How are you? Where's your sign? Good. Where's your sign? <laughs> oh, no, no, the, this one. This one. Yeah, <laughs> filibuster. Okay, okay. Yeah, we've seen that. I like it. Uh, uh, you know, tonight I wasn't so angry at him. Tonight I almost pitied him because he doesn't have the capacity to understand what systematic racism is. I'm sorry. Well, he just yeah, fails, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He fails uh, to grasp yeah. the idea. Well, I understand uh, systematic racism because I am white and I am part of that problem. You know, I mean, yeah, sure, I'm I'm fine. I don't think I really have in in my entire life could possibly have been accused of being racist. Um, nobody yeah, ever but has. Your was wrong. What? Your friend was wrong. You don't have to give up your white friends to be upset about systematic racism. Well, yes, but this you got to remember, the time when this was happening was not now. If it, was, if it happened now, I would say you're right. This was happening I at was the time. I was around in the 60s. I didn't give up my white friends. Yeah, well. And I didn't give up my black friends. Yeah, yeah. It's not about personal racism. It, systematic, it did... Did you benefit from racism because you're white? And, yes. And you did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. White. That's privilege. a very good point, John. I should have brought that yep. up to, to. It is a good point, John. Yeah. No, I, it, it's it's just that I I I realize that I have I have white privilege, whether I want it or not. I have white privilege, uh, and um, uh, I, I'm not. You know, I mean, I I remember the, the thing that. J- Jack Bishop and I used to love to do in Houston, Texas, was we would walk down the street with my wife, and he would be on one side of her and I would be on the other. And everybody would stare at us, not being able to figure out who's, who was with who. You know, 
And, and if and, somebody asks you, you say it's a three-way marriage. And that was a day when, you want to talk about racism, I mean, when I went to visit uh, Jack, where he lived, he was on a part, in a part of town that was an all-black area. And when he came to visit me, he came to an all-white area. And when he came to visit me, a lot of eyes were staring. And why did you have a black person over at your house last night? Fuck you. You know, but I mean, you know, it... it, it um, I, I've, I've seen the systematic racism, okay? I've seen it firsthand. Uh, oh, yeah. Talk about my time in Minneapolis with the riding with the Black Patrol and so on. So I know it exists. I've seen it. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's something that has existed for a long time in this country. I think a, I think a lot of white people in this country don't believe that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I agree with you there. See... Phil takes it to mean that he specifically doesn't recall ever doing anything overtly racist. And in that, he's probably right. But he bought a house one day. It never occurred to him that a black family may not have been free to buy that very same house due to redlining practices. Right. He voted in a spot where he was next up on line because, uh, you know, and felt that that was part of the way it should well, be. Well, no, as you lived your white life, you didn't see any of this going exactly. by. Exactly. White privilege okay. is just an assumption on our part, and we have to be well, reminded. Well, we, we don't even know what white, white privilege <laughs> is because it was just our way of life. You know. and, and, and this goes through every single institution. I mean, it's a gr- I mean, if you watch the documentary 13, uh, they talk about the fact that blacks were never able to own property, you know, since the days of slavery. And as a result, they've never been able to accumulate wealth. Yeah. Well, if you say that to the average white person at, in 2021, they say, well, what are you talking about? They can buy a house if they want. No, you don't get it. You know, it's the system. Syst- systemic means from the system, not yeah. from you, Phil, right. specifically. Right. Not everybody in this country was educated either, Robert. I'm sorry? I, I, I'm agreeing with you. Not everybody in this country was educated either. I'm not right. talking about blacks or whites and in general, just people stay things that they don't know anything about, you know, that are just kind of common knowledge. Yeah. I, I, I think that Maxine Waters did a, something that the Republicans did all during the Trump presidency. She made a statement, if yeah. things go wrong, let's protest and be, you know, riot or whatever she wanted to say. I, I listened to it. Yeah. And, you know, you know, it's a big deal because she's a Democrat. And said that, but mm-hmm. the but, but the the Republicans said it constantly while Trump was in office. Yeah. Did you feel comfortable about Biden though making the statement he did today before the trial was over? Yeah, Obama had the same problem. There was somebody that was being tried in court, and he made a statement while the trial was going on. Mm-hmm. It didn't affect anything. Well, Biden Biden fight. made the made, Biden made the excuse that he was doing it because. They were uh, having a, you know, they they were sequestered the jury and they couldn't hear his statements, but that's not the point. If in fact, after what he said, Chauvin was found not guilty, which was always a possibility, and we knew the inevitable riots were going to break out, some people could say, well, I did it because after all, uh, 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 the president of the United States felt he was guilty, you know. And it really, it would have placed Biden in the same position as Trump with his rioters, you know. So uh, Biden's very lucky that the thing came out the way it did, because now there's peace and quiet and nobody's rioting, although I thought there would still be riots, because when people's teams win a football game, they go out and tear down the, the half the city, you know, when they win. So I didn't know that necessarily was going to be true, but... If, in fact, Chauvin was found not guilty, uh, people would then refer to what Biden said and go, let's go do something about this. You know, so I think Biden was unwise to do that. I think it was a major mistake. What do you think, Josh? Was it a major mistake on his part? I agree with you. I do. Yeah. Uh, 
I came in in the middle of that for Biden to talk. You mean? Yeah, about the about the Chauvin trial. I mean, I'm not a fan of. It. I don't know if it was a mistake, but I don't really know. I I don't understand why the president of the United States has to have a little press conference because they found an officer guilty of killing someone in an American city. I mean, of any circumstance. I mean, I, I mean, I just don't know why it's at that why they give it that that much importance they feel they need to talk about it or whatever. I mean, I guess I understand why they I think, think they, I think why he wanted to give a speech tonight was because they figured that if it came out the other way, the president would have to be there to say, everybody keep calm, you know. So they had the the time. So instead they said, they, you know, he made a speech about justice has been served. But I just think it was unwise of him in the Oval Office to do what he did today. What do you, uh, some other people, how do you, how do you feel about it, Robert? I, listen, it, I feel the same way about that that I did about Maxine Waters. On one hand, I defend their right to say what they choose, you yeah, know, because yeah. of the First Amendment, obviously. But I think a little like an economist, and I'm always worried about unintended consequences. Sure. You know, Maxine Waters makes the statement she makes, by the way. Any Republican that comes out screaming is totally duplicitous. You know, like, hey, give me a break. Yeah, absolutely. But having said that, I, Maxine Waters goes home to her cushy home in California. And the, you know, the unintended consequences if things don't go quite her way is that a lot of black owned businesses get destroyed. You know, many black individuals wind up, you know, beaten over the head, arrested, God knows what. Yeah. And. You know, like in a way, you got to think those things through sometimes. Because it, yeah, it's very know. easy when you're a politician to suddenly grandstand for your crowd. Okay, you know the trouble is she should have she should have thought about what Trump did with the insurgents and not said anything. Well, she's you know? not known yeah, to be she's not known to be a brilliant thinker that way. No, you know. she isn't. Yeah. And she kept getting egged on, I think, also. The questions kept coming to her. Well, what do you think they should do? What do you think the protesters should do? You know, so they got egged on a little bit. It wasn't like that she came out and started saying, if this doesn't go our way, we're going to start raising hell. Well, what was, she, what was she doing in Brooklyn Center anyway? Isn't her home turf, San, California. you know, California? Southern California. You know, I mean... Uh, I, I, in fact, I think there are a lot of, uh, a lot of ambulance chasers in this situation. Um, you know, like Sharpton. Well, Sharpton, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I got, to, I hated Sharpton for a while, for years, because of, you know he was this big fat fuck who blew his mouth off, right? And even he will admit that that Sharpton was a disgusting, vile human being. Uh, uh, but uh, and Roy Ennis, I think of the NAACP, I think it was, or the Urban League. Uh, they they were on uh, whose show on uh, Downey, the Downey show. Uh, what was Downey's first? Morton name? Downey. Morton Downey, Jr. Morton Downey Jr.'s uh, oh. show. And uh, he uh, Ennis decked him, <laughs> literally decked him, just <laughs> just pow, sucker oh, punched him. But, you know, as time has gone on, I've, I've looked at Sharpton and gone, yeah, you know, when I heard him say, hey, you know, that was then when I was, you know, I did a lot of stupid things back then. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of liked him a little bit more. And, and, but lately, again, he's like ambulance chasing, you know? I mean... Uh, well, it's part of his job. Uh, well, it is, is it part of his job? Uh, yeah, it's part of his job to raise funds for his organization. By showing up for something like this, he manages to raise funds. You know? But well, see, he, you know, he's getting to become a halfway, not great speaker, but he can speak. <coughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm not a hundred, I'm not like totally against him like I used to be. It's just that I got to warmed up to him, and now I'm kind of cooling off a little bit, you know? Um, and the other guy is this guy who is the lawyer who always shows up whenever one of these oh, racial yeah. things happen. And, and people are going, I think today uh, Sharpton referred to him as the de facto attorney general of the black nation. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. Yeah. 
Uh, and Did you Crump. Crump. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Crump. And all I think of him as is is a racial incident ambulance chaser because people are going, oh, he's so helpful and blah blah blah, and he helps these families and blah. Well, you know, he got the oh. the uh, um, family of uh, what's his name, the guy. God, here my, my mind just went blank. Um, <laughs> the um, uh, Floyd. Floyd, yeah, Floyd's uh, relatives. He got Floyd's relatives $27 million. He's a lawyer. How much of that did he get? At least a third. At least a yep. third, exactly. Is he doing this pro bono? I don't think so. Not when $27 million uh, check gets written. He wants his his share, you know? Um, and, yeah, they did. Huh? They did seem a little bit too rejoiceful at that press conference. I mean, you know, it's yeah. good that the guy was found guilty, but I mean, shit, they, yeah. their their relative is dead, and they're, you know, I don't know, they just seem too jovial about the whole thing. Yeah, um, but, but what what do you think of the verdict today, Kevin? Uh, pretty much what I thought was going to happen. You know, it uh, didn't shock me. Um, I was kind of irritated with all the the pre verdict garbage i had to walk away from all that what do you mean all the, the maxine waters thing going back to that i i don't know why those politicians get into uh doing all the you know their noise they should just let the legal process you know play out and then do their talking you know even the judge said yesterday the same thing he basically said let's just you know i don't know why they're getting involved let them do their job and then let them do their thing. But when they start, you know, getting involved and start tainting what could be trouble in, 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 a, in the legal process, that, mm -hmm. that just makes things harder, you know, let, let them do go through their process and then, and then say what you got to say. But yeah, it, well, it, it, what it was doing was just building more tension and, and getting people standing outside the courthouse and, and is getting the, the media all, oh, look, look at the building. Oh, they're standing inside the building. And he could be walking up there. Oh, look, flo you know, the brother is now taking a piss. And now he's walking down the hallway. And, you know, it, it was this for the last 10 hours. And could you imagine if this went on for a week? And, you know, you imagine yeah. being a juror there and looking out the window and seeing all this shit. Well, the, a juror oh. in this trial... <clears throat> You know, it, let's face it, they weren't supposed to be aware of anything. But if you're right. not aware of anything... I'm sure they got the windows closed you, off and they're do, in the middle of the building. Do you want really somebody anything. who's not aware of what's going on to even be part right. of this trial? You know, so, I mean, uh, and most of them were probably witnesses to the, to, the, to the actual event because the video was being shown everywhere. Right. Um, uh, well, the politicians need to stay out of this shit yeah, and, and yeah. let it let it well, happen. Well, like I, as let I the said, legal I was process happen and not be a part of that legal process and not be a part of the shit stirring until it's done. And I and made a big deal out of the, the fact today that, that Biden, you know, made his remarks about this whole thing before the trial. I didn't hear Biden make any remarks beforehand. I didn't hear that part. I heard the after remarks. Yeah, you know, which were fine as far as I'm concerned. That's just an yeah, opinion. Yeah, but what? But beforehand, he was in the Oval Office. I didn't office. hear anything before. He was in the so Oval Office. Well, say? basically, he was in the Oval Office, and he said, uh, uh, "I quite frankly, uh, now that the jury's sequestered, I can say this. Uh, I think he's guilty as hell." And I, hope, uh, I didn't yeah. hear that, and I don't think that was right yeah, either. Yeah, though. no, no, he shouldn't have said anything until it was time. These, yeah, these that, that was a, that was a Trumpism. Trump. Well, it was a Trumpism yeah, like, in like that if Trump let's say, let's say he like let's say he was found not. Yeah. Let's say he was found not guilty, yeah. and riots ensued. People would evoke what the president had said, sure, and it sure. would have been just yeah, like Trump with the riot rioters in his case. Just yeah. like you know, that's just a, that's just another not reason quite. that the politicians should stay out of it because then you're starting to you're starting to mix the politics into the into the legal system. Yeah, you don't you don't make a comment on any kind of trial till it's over with, you know, and then you can say, hey, I I I agree with the verdict. You know, yeah, the legal process took its yeah. took its course. Yeah, but I don't know how these would. people could have been in that uh, that jury room and not known there was a crowd outside and not known that the, their their decision was going to have an effect on these communities. 
You know, because if he was found not guilty, even on one charge, the rioting would have started. These people, these people were ready. You know, I was I was ready for a riot to start, even if it was guilty. Well, I I, I said that to Marjorie yeah. that they probably riot anyway because when football teams win, the winners go out and riot in the streets. <laughs> right. You know. I mean, tear down the goalposts. Tear, no, but they burn down businesses and everything. Right? They go crazy. Cars and whatever. Yeah. It doesn't take a racial incident to make people do that, you know. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think it came out the way it should have, and I'm glad that it's all peacefully. Everybody's, you know, peace and love, peace and love. But uh, well, they won't. Uh, will they be peace and love as this process goes forward? That's now, number the one, question. they're going to appeal this. You know that. Yeah, they are. And, and while and, and he's he, there appealing, he left it. it up to the judge yeah. to do the Bailey's, uh, the Bailey's decision. You know, so what, how much, how uh, he he gave what I forgot what it's called the Bailey's. Uh, what is it, Josh? The the Bailey's decision on what kind of a sentence he he gets. He was going to leave that the either up to the jury, to decide, not yeah, the up to the jury or the judge decides. Right. So. You know, the ju I knew he was going to do that because he didn't want the he. I think he thought he was going to be guilty, and he knew that the judge was going to have to either be lenient or a little bit hard on him. And yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah, but but I think that there will be an appeal, and I think he'll be out on bail. Oh, gonna be he'll be out on bail out. during the appeal. That will piss no. people off. No. Okay, no. you don't think he'll be out on bail during? <clears throat> I don't think now. so. Nope, yeah, I, don't I don't think, think so. so. I think there's too many charges against okay. him. Yep. You know. But say say on appeal, you know, they decide that uh, some parts of it were not fair or whatever. Uh, we could have another. We could have a riot at that point. What do you think, Charlie? You haven't been talking about this much. Well, funny. I had something else I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, everybody is misquoting Black Lives Matter. Nobody ever said only Black Lives Matter. Nobody ever said that. Mm -hmm. The cops are going around acting like black lives don't matter. They're shooting black kids all over the damn country. Yeah. As if black lives don't matter. That's why we say black lives matter. Because the cops are acting like black lives don't matter. They right. weren't acting like white, white lives don't matter. They weren't acting mm -hmm. like Muslim lives don't matter. They were acting like black lives don't matter. You don't think they so were... Black lives matter. Sixteen-year-old girl in Columbus, Ohio, black girl, just before the verdict come out, got shot by a cop. Wow. In Columbus. Mm -hmm. uh, you you don't think, uh, uh, Charlie, that uh, things are just as bad for Hispanics? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. But again, we didn't say Hispanic lives don't matter. No, yeah, well, you didn't say they, no. They you say didn't say that, no. and that's true. No, you. Yeah, white, I think they treat Hispanics. I, I just never, as I bad. never, I never had anything against white lives matter. Um, uh, rather, black lives matter. Never had anything against that. Just simply because, uh, sure, the, your, your, that, that's the r rallying cry for your team. Uh, and it's up to the other teams to have rallying cries for their teams. But I think that you know what we have to what we have to look at, and we refuse to look at, is we make this a black, white, uh, brown, uh, yellow, whatever color matter, okay? When it really isn't. When it really is a systemic problem of the haves and the have-nots. And that the yeah. poor in this country are treated with a different kind of justice, treated with a different kind of medicine, treated with a different kind of everything than the, than the, than the immediate middle class or well-to-do. And it is, a, it is a, um, a caste problem more than anything else. And it just happens that because of what happened in this country over the years, Blacks are the recipients of poverty more than any other group. Now, does that make sense, Charlie? Yeah, yeah, but by the same token, just because I say black lives matter, it doesn't mean I'm saying that blue lives don't matter. I get very upset and I cry when I see a cop get killed too. Yeah. 
Yeah. All lives matter, <clears throat> but it's just some lives are being treated like they don't matter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff. One of the things that I, I never hear anybody really saying this, and I always think about it, I think a lot of people that I meet and see, and either my friends or, or, or other people that I just meet and talk mm -hmm. to them, whatever. Right. They're black people, okay? They're very articulate. Uh, they look great. They dress good. They seem like they have good jobs. There's a lot of black people who have what, what you say is the black people don't have the, any of those benefits. Well, some of them do. Yeah. A lot more of them. But, but I'll bet if you asked any of those well-dressed black people who yeah. have money, have they ever been stopped by the cops and been oh, singled yeah. out because they were black, oh, no. they'll tell That's, you yes. That is another story because my, my good friend's kid who works at Yale, he's, a, he's not a doctor, he's a, a computer expert, and he helps people out all the time, helping the doctors or who, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But when he goes home and gets in the car, he is afraid no matter what. Mm -hmm. I hope he's going to make it home. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. It's something we don't live with. Yeah. Alan? So, you know, I've had black friends try and explain this to me. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get kicked in the teeth here, but I don't like Black Lives Matter. The organization. I think there's no organization. Time. But to begin with, Alan, there's no organization. Black Lives Matter started as a statement created, a hashtag created by some woman. I can't remember who it was, and it just caught on. It's not well, like it's for, a movement or it's an organization. I don't know. Uh, there's a there's a four block area in Washington D.C. Black Lives Matter Plaza. Yes, but there, they, but they but it, there, there was no. Am I right, Charlie? Correct me on this. There's no Black Lives Matter organization. I mean, I can't. I couldn't possibly tell you who the president of it or who the secretary treasurer of it. I mean, it's not an organization like that. Yeah, you know, the guy that just he's he's uh, being looked into right now. Somebody uh, for fraud of money or something like that in the Black Lives Matter organization. It's been in and out of the news. I don't I haven't followed it much. So my thought is, and and I, I understand that uh, black lives don't matter to a lot of cops. I get that. I used to be a cop. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But to say black lives matter, to me, when somebody says that, to me, it means other lives don't matter. And I know, Charlie, you just explained it, but I, and I have black friends, some are cops, and they they, you know, they, they, they say, no, you don't get it. And I said, I guess I don't get it because, you know, I mean, there was the guy in, I don't know what it was, Dallas, Houston, something like that, mm -hmm. that got up on to top of a building with a high powered rifle and was killing people left and right, mainly police officers in the name of Black Lives Matter. And, you know, my black friends will say, oh, no, no, he wasn't really involved with Black Lives Matter. Well, that's what he said. I don't know, you know, and... That, that, that's know. your lone gunman. If it had been a white person doing something, everybody would say, well, he was just a troubled lone gunman. Yeah, I don't and know. All of a sudden, okay. you got a black guy doing it, and he represents every black person in the country. No, I don't, I don't, think, I, I don't think he rep represents. I think he represents himself. And uh, police, when you're on the high ground, you're <coughs> at, a, at a big advantage shooting. But um, Ooh, sure. And so the police sent a robot up there that normally – disarms bombs with a bomb in it, blew them up. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but I just, you know, I, I, I personally, I have a problem with the, with the statement, Black Lives Matter. All, why not say All Lives Matter? Now, the, the, I totally get the thing with... No, no, uh, I, you see, I have nothing against... Alan, let me say this. By the way, Charlene, turn your camera the other way. You're sideways. <laughs> we'll just leave it that way. Uh, um, uh, I have nothing against the term Black Lives Matter. I mean, I, of course, I believe every life is, is sacred and, and means something. But I think, as Charlie articulated so well, Black Lives Matter was a statement that was made by blacks saying, hey, we count too, 
You know, Absolutely. you can't single us out. Absolutely. And, and, and you can't think that we don't matter. And so in and of itself, it's a very righteous, decent statement. If we said, but Mexicans don't, no, then that would be another problem, you know. But no, we understand that when they say black lives matter, it's because they're saying, you know, we're being singled out here and, and, and we want to matter, okay? Uh, and I think they do matter. And I think, I, I think the term has been a good one because I think it has put some people on notice about their actions and the way they, you know, handle themselves, so, you know. Um, Whatever. I don't know what, what happened. What happened to Brian Neary? I think he uh, must have had a problem. He dropped off when. Uh, huh? He left. he left. I don't know. He just he couldn't he handle this. Too. No. What do you mean he couldn't handle it? I'm teasing. No, it's not that. He put up with a lot more. I think he probably had problems. So with this Charlie computer. explained it really best, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I would have been happier. Maybe I, I, I didn't. I didn't put the organization together. Black Lives Matter. But if they said Black Lives Matter also, or also, I don't know how to how to phrase it. But it's not yours to 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 decide what a bunch of people who have been put upon for three hundred, four hundred years should yeah, call I, their I, organization. I, I guess you know. I mean, I mean, I I would love to ask the NAACP why it's still the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, but that's another story altogether. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I just I. I, I just don't, don't like it personally. <laughs> no, I it's funny. That, it's I, funny. They have been almost assiduous in their desire not to change their name. <clears throat> you know, they always just call it the NAACP, but they don't I, say I, I, National I, I, Association for Colored People, which is what it means. You know, uh, and uh, okay. and believe it or not, colored people was considered a proper statement at one time. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, it keeps changing. You have to you have to be hip to the vernacular. You know. You have to say people of color. color. <laughs> well, I had a problem here once because the guy who rented us this apartment, the guy we're suing and he's suing us and everything. Uh, they were up. We, we, every about once a year, we'd invite them over to have a glass of wine together. Okay, he and his wife. And I, I we were talking about racism and so on, and I said, well, people uh, who are colored. And I'm, what, I'm, what I really meant to say was, and he looked at me and went, colored? And I said, no, I didn't mean to say colored, but I meant of color. Because I didn't want to just say black, because it's a whole spectrum of people who are affected by racism in this country, and they're people of color. Uh, so as a group, how do you refer to them? You have to be really in a, a, a kind of awkward and say, people of color? Uh, See, or, or just say colored people, people who were colored. Uh, really I, I never found it a bad term for that way, but it should have taken, it used to just mean black. It should have taken in a whole spectrum of people, you know. So part of my prejudice was early on, Black Lives Matter uh, was going after cops. Mm -hmm. The innocent had nothing to do with the killing of a, of a black man. They, if they went after the officer, it had killed somebody black, mm -hmm. and it was a white officer. I can understand that, but they were going after innocent people early on, mm -hmm. and so now they've calmed down, and I think they're doing good for the black community. But I, just the thought of saying Black Lives Matter, to me, all lives matter, and I understand. Yeah, but it, but that's that wasn't the point they were trying we to make. Knew your life mattered. We've known it for hundreds of years. We've known it since the Mayflower landed, for Christ's sake. We don't need to emphasize that your life matters. It right. always has. That's and theirs the part has I too. think you're missing. Yeah. But theirs has, too. I'm not a racist. No, it it has it. The, they don't think it, it has. That's why they do no, it hasn't. Lives That's their point. Because their lives don't ha haven't mattered yeah. for You see, years. also, there's they another there's another factor here I just thought about. The term Black Lives Matter has now been used as a political trope. In other words, when the, when the Republicans want to put down the movement, they oh, go, yeah. oh, the Black Lives Matter people, you know. And the fact no, is, it, it's not, yeah, it's yeah, not no. a political philosophy. It is just a, hey, treat us better philosophy, you know. It's not, a, it's not, am I right, 
Charlie, it's not a yeah. uh, a political trope. Well, the, the Republicans treat it as a t- as a uh, terrorist organization. They call it BLM. That BLM. Well, yeah, they do call it BLM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. BLM and Antifa. <laughs> yeah, right. Antifa. Oh man, you know Antifa. Well, well they'll they'll discuss that in their new Anglo-Saxon caucus, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let me let me um, um, bring up a, a thing that uh, this is just for fun here for a second uh, that uh, that came up uh, to me yesterday. All of a sudden, I get on my my Chrome browser this announcement that everything I'm doing, my passwords have been compromised. Okay, that's nice of them to let you know. Right, and yeah. I had the, the, first it was about sixty seven of them that were compromised, and by the end of the day, it was like nine hundred compromised passwords. I don't even have 900 accounts, okay? <laughs> and it really pissed me off. Because, so I went back, I made sure that uh, all the things were, I exchanged money, I didn't, you know, they couldn't get onto. Other stuff I didn't really care, okay? But then I was wondering, how unusual is my password? And it turns out it was, was it didn't make the list, but I have a list here of the 10 most used passwords. Password is probably number one. Password. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Number one is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Number two, what do you think number two is? Anybody have a guess? Uh, Well, it's in reverse. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. (laughs) Number three, and I don't get this one. Picture one. Huh? Picture one. I don't understand it either. Number four is password. Number five is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. (laughs) Clever. Number six is one, 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 one. Yeah, I figured that one. You won't make a mistake. Number seven is one, two, three, one, two, three. (laughs) We have a pattern. Number eight is one, two, three, four, five. Number nine is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And the number 10 is Senha. What the hell is Senha? <laughs> Those are the uh, most used. And then I have uh, the worst passwords uh, in the last uh, three years here. But uh, uh, well, tell us the password, Alex. What? I'm not gonna tell you my password. You, you know, Alex, do you use one password or a different? Password? I was using for years one password. Over, okay. and this is the one that they say has been compromised. You know how to make it secure? How do how how I make it secure? Yeah, you you buy something that's called a password manager. I do have that. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool. And I don't it, I don't like them. They're built into every Apple. They're built into every browser. Yeah. Every Apple. Every, every Apple. Keychain. Oh, yeah. oh, keychain. Well, that's a little different. The uh, the browser, Chrome browser, has a thing. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Question. Yeah. Is that tight? <laughs> Where, is that your password? That's my yeah. password. <laughs> I always use the suggested password that they. Gross. Suggest. No, I um uh, uh, you know, I have uh, Chrome browsers have a password uh, thing where you can just put in the password and then it just t- takes it and puts it there. And I also have another program here called, uh, uh, what's it called? I have a name here, uh, Dashlane. But I don't like that because every time I would put do something, I had to put in a password for Dashlane. It was a pain in the ass. But anyway. Um, well, you're not the only one that gets that message. I've gotten that message and had to change my password a couple times. Yeah, but this is like the, I got to do it every time I go to a page. They say you got to change your password, and I'm going leave me the fuck alone. You know, I, <laughs> well, I'll change my password if I want healthy. to. They don't want you to get hacked, so they want to let well, you. Well, yeah, know but if they don't password. want me to get hacked, why don't they get in touch with these people who got hacked where my they got my password? You know, may have gotten my password. So far, it's not been compromised yet, um, but may have gotten my password. Uh, why don't they go to them and say, make your, your things a little more secure? I mean, come on, you're big computer companies, and you get hacked? You know, you don't have a, a whole 
uh, well, tech, tech department that works overtime to make sure that nobody can hack your system? You said they haven't done anything yet. They don't need to yet. Hmm. They can do it later. They well, anyway, it, the, the one I've been using for guys. one I've been using for years. <clears throat> I've changed on a lot of my stuff, but on some stuff I just went. And some of it was with an old email address I don't even use anymore. You know, I'm going, why are you bugging me with this? You know? Just tell me, hey, there's been a hack somewhere, and you might want to change all your major uh, uh, passwords. Yeah, my bank, I'll change. I changed that yesterday. Uh, my, uh, uh, a few other Shit. places. Uh, 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 what? PayPal. What? Yeah, PayPal. Uh, 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 porn Bay. Uh, that one I. <laughs> well, the message I got said that that pa that your password. They actually told me the password that that was that was that they had found on the dark web. Mm -hmm. That people so apparently other people have used that password and have had their account hacked. So they were warning me. They they didn't know who. Well, was that wasn't what the they did with me. With me, they, there was somebody. There was some company that got hacked, and a lot of names and stuff got. You know, they got in there and got three million names or something. And then they go and say, well, you know, here's what you probably were hacked for. I mean, it was all the same password. You know, it was my old password that I'd used over and over and over again. And my feeling is, you know, uh, I do business with companies. I hope that they would be decent enough to to have a uh, non-hacking department that makes sure this kind of thing doesn't go on, that I'm safe doing business with them and giving them a password, you know. Yes, Robert. Just be careful you're not being fished at any point. One of the oldest tricks in the book oh, yeah. is to send you a message that says, no, "I know that you know, there's been something that compromises you." You can go to this site and change your password for your bank and no this was the this was the uh, this was the uh, uh, the actual what I was involved what the problem is this was coming from my browser this is coming from Chrome and they have a thing here let me go here passwords um, uh, I'll, I'll show the audience I guess I can show the audience I don't trust the browser that you get for free to protect my passwords. Well, uh, anyway, right. uh, here uh, the point is that um, uh, uh, this was like this is like the page here, and you see I have all my passwords and so on. Oh yeah, here. we can. See but that. here it says check passwords. Fifty compromised passwords. Well, it was nine hundred, so something <laughs> happened, and here are the compromised passwords. And all of the first bunch of them is just stuff that's on my in-house uh, IP. Uh, and none of these numbers are being used. <coughs> I, I can't even figure out how that came out. And then a couple of these other companies that I do business with. But it wasn't, it's, at least it's down somewhat today. But uh, th that's, that's, what, that's what I got, you know, was this list of, of things from uh, from um, the Chrome browser that said, "Watch out, you might be hacked." You know, uh, Herb, what happened to you? We don't have your picture up. Well, I have no idea why it's not there. Why don't you click on? Sure. Why don't you click on the camera on on Zoom? Well, I did, and when I did that, <clears throat> I was getting your sound, your audio, about thirty seconds delayed. I just dropped in to say, "Hey, I'll be on in about no." Oh, 13 minutes with the intersection. Yeah. Oh, and invite well, your, the reason your citizens you, yeah, panel yeah. to come join us. The reason you're hearing me 30 seconds later is you're probably listening to me on a browser. So, no, I'm not listening to you. Oh, I was listening to you on a browser. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Turn that's the browser why, off. And that's why. So, but why, so why don't we have a picture on you? Don't you have a don't you have a camera picture of a camera there that you just click on? Well, let's see here. Uh, camera, camera. Oh, yeah. Sure. Hmm. No, no, let's see. I got a thing down here that says, let's see when I do that. Yes. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. go. There you are. See, there's your lovely mug. Please, oh. let's not lie oh. here today. <laughs> okay, there's your aging. Uh, <laughs> just, all right, just because a man had a birthday over the weekend. Tapioca looking like complexion. <laughs> you know, hmm. last weekend I asked if I could come to your show, Jack. Right. Yes. Where were you? You said, you said yes. I had a hell of a time trying to get 
um, uh, whatever it is Skype. that you use. You don't use Zoom. You use something else. What is it? And if you go Skype. to Skype, and if you go Skype. to the uh, GabNet page, mm -hmm. and it'll tell you how to do that. I think, right, Alex? Uh, no. Not anymore. Not no. anymore. Okay. It doesn't well, tell you how to use Skype. All but... right. Then let on your own, God damn it. <laughs> Just down, download, all you have to do, Alan, and all you other people out there is download Skype, uh, go to Skype.com, download it, put it on your computer. And then what you do, once it's installed, you simply click on who you want to call and put in GabNet Live, and what it will go and ring out. What, you, yes. have, you have to it, set up a account? It's owned by Microsoft, and I don't like giving them information, and they ask all kinds of information. Well, do, I, well, do like my kid does and lie about it. There you go. The trouble is I have a, a Windows computer, which has a Microsoft account, and I tried doing that, and it said, oh, do you want to change your password? I'm like, no, I don't want to change my Microsoft password. I just, I want, just want to use want... Skype. Yeah, all I want to do is use Skype to get on. We might show. have to get Jack into Zoom. Absolutely. When you get yeah. on Zoom, I'll be on your show every night. It's, Great. It, it's just easier for people. To, to, yep. to use, you know. Then I'll have to get my 16-year-old grandson in here to show his old, decrepit grandpa how to do that. I don't know. Just, You're doing pretty good right now. Yeah. Well, you know, this is magic. Do you have any passwords you don't need anymore? <laughs> you know, I I mean, I want ones I can remember, okay? Hey. I, they, they always send me, they say, oh, hey, why, here, here, we'll give you a, a password. And it's like, Five seven nine uppercase this lowercase that seven zero five, and yeah okay my browser will remember that. Maybe mm -hmm. if but Mike if, if all of a sudden tomorrow Google decides to go out of business and not make a browser anymore, I'm dead in the water. I don't know what any of my you know. That's well, what's nice about a password manager that doesn't have to do with a, a browser. So well, like I have that, but Dashlane doesn't work for me. It's just too problematic. How about how about trying Norton? Their security company. Oh they God, I hate Norton. Okay. I hate Norton. They try just a different suck. try a different antivirus, McAfee or no? Or, I I I use uh, what do I use? I use a, 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 a company. A way where? What is it? I can't remember now. One but, password. Uh, uh, no, no, no. He was he was talking about in his case. He was talking about antivirus programs. Yeah, but they have password. Mine's Adv Advast is like, what I use. That that's good software. I'll bet they have a a, a password yeah. manager that's a lot easier to work and a lot yeah. more secure. Uh, anyway, it <laughs> looks like uh, Irv is saying I gotta go. No, I gotta go, but I got a suggestion for you. You can do what I do. What do you do? I use the year and the make of the first three automobiles I bought when I was a teenager. Okay, that's fine. And those are all of my passwords. If you can figure out what kind of geeky car I was driving when I was 16, you got my... Ambler? No, it wasn't. Uh, so... A Ford? No, I said geeky car. A geeky car. Oh, that would be like uh, a... Uh... Uh, AMC, now you've known me for a AMC long time. Pacer. Yeah, an AMC Pacer? <laughs> no, nope. hey, listen, the Pacer came out when I was in my 30s, almost oh. 40. Okay, Ooh. okay. Well, the Studebaker, good call. Studebaker? Studebaker. The car I didn't own a Studebaker, oh. but that's a good pass. The car that you know, looked the, the same way coming and going. You remember that? It had oh, sure do. That, yeah. that was the you know, that was the first new styled car after World War II. Really? Wow. Yep. Yeah. Really? First company come out with a new looking car. Yeah. Up until then, they were rather boxy and square and so on. Yeah. Well, before that, they were uh, after World War II, they just started remaking the cars they had made mm -hmm. uh, in '41 and '42. Yeah. Yeah. I Look, I gotta go, man. I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh, well, I, right. I gotta, I'm 75 years old. I got an old bladder. Go take a pee. On go a regular a basis. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, Charlie. And change my name on this thing. Uh, oh, you want me to, got, uh, okay, you can change it yourself. Okay. What, all, right, all right, I'll change it myself, but because yeah. I think, I think I've got, uh, well, I don't have any ex-wives like you do, but uh, I, I think I've got some ex-girlfriends who are looking for, uh, Urban not back alimony, but, but non-paid child support. Catch yeah. in a bit. Okay, bye. Anyway, bye. Uh, Charlene, you haven't said anything tonight. You just uh, came on, just uh, sat there. 
Well, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> trouble with what? Yes, trouble. That's easy for me to get in trouble. You're no, I wanted to say, I mean, you're going, I know, but um, when um, Robert mentioned something, has anyone seen that thing, Exterminate All the Brutes? Is that like HBO or something? What? Exterminate All the Brutes? What about that? What is that? Yeah, it, it starts out with that how the Europeans came here and, you know, um, exterminate all the Indians, you know, because you were saying that it's not just uh, black people. Aren't oh, the Indians and Amer the Native yeah. Americans have been given the worst time. Yep. Just a horrible time. Yeah. It's uh, a good thing that exterminate all the brutes. Yeah. In fact, they made uh, the, uh, what department did they put a, uh, a Native American as the head of now? Uh, and it was the thing that interior? I... Uh, it, it, interior? Interior, yeah, interior. yeah. And she she's yeah. in charge of, like, all the reservation oh. stuff like that. So, you know, that's good. That's great, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, Biden is bringing a certain dignity. By the way, quickly, did anybody see Sean Hannity with Trump? Oh, I did. Oh, <laughs> was that a... What, he, it, uh, there wasn't a tongue long enough for Sean Hannity to stick up Trump's ass. Yeah. He tried, he tried, though. He tried. He tried. He really tried. Jesus. But at one point, I got to tell you this quickly, he starts talking about the border and the people down there. And he says, well, you know something? He says, and I'm, I'm getting deja vu. He says, they're bringing in drugs. You know, they're bringing in disease. They're bringing in this. And I'm saying, come on, rapists, rapists. And he says, and rapists. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what, what is this? Is this the deja vu all over again? You know. Oh, Fox God, News no. Fox needs to replace him. Huh? Fox News needs to replace him. Who, Trump or Hannity? Yes. Both of them. Oh. Both. Oh, Both. boy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Uh it was you, if you can't if you haven't seen it go to youtube it's on there it's just it's 12 minutes of just you will just want to break the tv set did you, did you hear him when he said uh the uh pfizer's in bed with the fda that's why uh you know that that's he goes oh yeah the pfizer uh talked yeah. the F, fda into um putting a pause on the johnson and johnson yeah. vaccine <laughs> oh, what a boy. fucking idiot anyway hey listen we've run out of time here but I want to thank, uh, what is the problem? Oh, that's what the problem is. Uh, uh, I want to thank uh, 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 Alan, and I want to thank uh, Trucker Steve, and I want to thank Charlie Wallace, and I want to thank Jeff. Robert, always great to have you here uh, uh, with your fun little signs. And John Larkin uh, and uh, Josh, you haven't said much tonight, but, you know, thanks for joining us tonight. Kevin, thanks for joining us as well. Uh, and Charlene, you hardly said anything, but, you know, hey, fine. You know, good having you here. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? And then they will call it uh, quits. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to call it quits. Um, uh, the next show up is uh, Jack Bishop in the intersection. He'll be doing it via Skype at GabNet Live. I will uh, be back here returning tomorrow night. There's a sports show on tomorrow night at 8.30. And then at 10.30, uh, I'll be here with yet another ramble. Okay, we're going to keep doing this till we get it right. In the meantime, uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And as always, please be safe out there. Wear a mask and get vaccinated. Let's get herd immunity, okay? Okay.